Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the legal question partition equals subset sum. Alright, so given a non-empty array nums containing only positive integers, find if the array can be partitioned into two subsets such that the sum of element in both subsets is equal, okay? So over here, uh, we're going to be given an array called nums which has integer values and we want to divide it into two different sub areas, okay? And the sum of both of these sub areas must be equal to the same thing. So let's just look at these two examples here and then we'll go into it into more detail. So over here we have 1, 5, 11, and 5. So what they ended up doing is they partitioned it so that one sub area has 1, 5, and 5. So that's one sub area, 1, 5, 5. And if you add them up, 5 plus 5, 10, 10 plus 1, 11, okay? And the other sub area would just have the element 11. So the sum of both of these sub areas are the same. So in that case, we end up returning true. So over here, we have another example, one, two, three, and five. And over here, since the area cannot be partitioned into equal sum subsets, in that case, we end up returning false. All right, so now let's just go into more in detail about how we can actually solve this question kind of methodically. Okay, so over here, let's just start off by looking at a very general approach, okay? So over here, we're going to start off with nums, okay? So nums is um, going to be an integer array. And over here, what we're going to end up doing is let's find the sum of nums, okay? So the sum of nums over here is going to be equal to, let's just call it sum uh, n, okay? So sum of nums is equal to sum n. So now nums over here is going to get divided into two subsets, okay? So let's call it subset one as S1 and we'll also have subset two. So these over here are the two subset of nums. So over here, the sum of subset of S1, okay? So this is uh, referring to the sum of everything in S1 and the sum of everything in S2 should be equal to the same thing. And when they are going to be equal to the same thing, in that case, we are going to end up returning true. So that is one of our conditions. So the sum of S1 is going to be equal to the sum of S2. Now let's just kind of rewrite this equation. So another way to write this is we know uh, subset one and subset two, when you add them up, it's going to give you the same value as the sum of nums. So in other words, S1 plus S2 is equal to the sum of nums, which is like we defined over here, sum n. So let's just write that down as well. So S1 plus S2 is equal to sum n. Again, remember, these are the conditions for when we have an answer called or of true, right? So let's kind of simplify this, okay? So another way to write this is sum one is equal to sum two. So you could just uh, rewrite this in a way such that two X is equal to sum N. Actually, uh, there's no point of introducing a new variable. Let's just say two S one is equal to sum N. And that over there is basically, okay, and finally, let's just simplify this even more. So, subset, so the sum of subset one is equal to nothing else but the sum of nums divided by two. Now this equation actually tells us quite a bit. So this equation, what it tells us straight away is that uh, our subsets, so S1 and S2, are going to have a sum equaling to the sum of nums divided by two. So how exactly can we use this in our question? So what we can do is we can check if the sum of n mod 2 is equal to 0. Now, if it is equal to 0, then that means we have an answer. And uh, that means that we possibly have an answer, okay? But what if it's not equal to 0? So when it's not equal to 0, then in that case, we are never going to have an answer. Because we know for a fact that one of the subsets, the sum of one of the subsets is equal to sum n divided by 2. And since that's the value of one of the subsets, the other subset is also going to have the same value. So this over here, you can kind of think of it as our first or kind of like our base condition. Okay, perfect. So this is one thing that we want to consider. Okay, now how exactly? So let's say we have some sort of uh, sum. And uh, instead of just uh, talking about general values, let's just look at a more specific example. So I'll just look at the same example that we were given in our question. So let's just write it down. So nums over here is equal to one comma five comma 11 comma five. Perfect, okay? 
So let's start off by finding out what is the sum of this. So the sum of this is going to be 5 plus 5, 10, plus 1, 11, 11 times 2, or 11 plus 11, 22. So this over here is the sum of nums, okay? We know this value. So what is the sum? Let me just write it down. So sum of each subset. So what is the sum of each subset going to be? So by the formula that we just found out earlier, it's just going to be the sum of nums divided by 2, which is nothing else but 11. All right, perfect. So we know that this over here, we can kind of think as of our 11 to be the target value for each of the subsets, okay? So now how exactly we have this information, but how are we going to use it to solve our question? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a recursive approach. And you can kind of think of it this way, right? So uh, this uh, nums over here, so 1, 5, 11, and 5, our target over here is 11. Now, each time our target is going to change. So let's say one of the subsets has 5. So how is the target going to change? Now, the target is going to be 11 minus 5. So you can kind of break down this problem into smaller sub-steps as we are including more numbers inside of our uh, sub-array uh, for nums, okay? So hopefully that did make sense. And in simple words, instead of just me talking, let's just draw it out as a tree, right? Because uh, we are going to be taking a recursive approach to solve this. So in the beginning, what is our target? So our target is going to be 11. Let's just write it down. And what is the area that we're working with? So the area that we're working with is 1, 5, 11, and 5, right? So in the beginning, we have everything. Now over here, uh, we're going to have two options, okay? But what exactly are these two options going to be? Now, one of the options over here, so like we said, we are going to have two sub areas. So let's just uh, start off or let's just take the number five, for example, okay? We'll be removing the number five. So let's just say the two options we have is uh, looking at only one of the sub areas, five could be part of that sub area or it would not be part of that sub area. Those are the two options, right? So it would either be part of sub area one or sub area two. But in this case, we're only going to be looking in terms of one sub array, okay? So let's just say uh, in terms of that one sub array, 5 could be a part of it or it could not be a part of it. So let's say 5 is going to be a part of it. So if 5 is part of it, what would happen? Then in that case, our target would decrease. So our target would now be 11 minus 5. So what exactly is 11 minus 5? Well, that's going to give us 6. And over here, the nums area that we're going to be working with is not going to include that 5. So we're just going to have 1, 5, and 11. Now, on this other condition, on the right, in this case, we are not going to consider 5 as being part of this specific sub-area. So in that case, the target remains the same. It's going to remain as 11. And in this case, our sub-area is now going to be 1, 5, and 11 as well. All right, perfect. So those are kind of our two conditions. And all we're really going to do from now on is just going to build upon this until we reach some sort of condition and we'll look at what those conditions are. Okay, so now let's just go over here and let's do the same thing. So let's say we go to the left and if we end up going to the left, uh, what's going to happen? So over here, uh, we're going to take 11, okay? And what is how is our target going to change? So our target is now going to be 6 minus 11, giving us a value of negative 5, okay? Now notice this is a negative value and we'll look into what that means, okay? And what is our area going to be? Our area is going to be 1, 5. Let's just do the other side as well real quickly. So over here, our target is going to stay the same since we're not considering 11 to be part of this current sub area. And in that case, our area is going to, again, it's just going to be 1 and 5. Perfect. But now let's look at this one over here. We have a negative number, which is weird. So what exactly does the fact that we have a negative number even mean? So what this actually really means, having a negative number over here, what that's telling us is that whatever our current sub area is, it has crossed our target. Now remember, our target is 11, right? The sum of the sub area must be 11 in order to get a valid answer. But in this case, our sub area has a sum which is greater than 11. And really to make it 11, make it equal to 11, our target is now become negative five. And that means that we are never going to get an answer. The sub area has become too big. So what we're gonna do directly, once we end up with a negative target, that means that the current sub area, the sum of it is too big. 
So directly at this point, at this uh, instance over here, if you keep going down this path over here, right, you are not going to get an answer. It's going to be false. But if you go on to the right over here, you are possibly going to get an answer, okay? So what I'm going to do just real quickly, we'll only look at this part over here, right? So let's just focus on only that part. And I'm just going to remove this again and write this over here, okay? Okay, so perfect. So over here, we have 6, comma, and then we have 1 and 5, okay? Uh, again, this is also, this is not how it's going to start off, but this is just one of the roots, okay? So, sorry, no, it's, okay. So over here, again, two options. So let's just look at them real quickly. So over here, what we could do is we could consider the 5 as being part of the sub area, okay? And if we end up considering the 5 to be part of the sub area, our target is now going to change to 6 minus 5, which is 1. And over here, we would have one uh, left out, right? And over here, finally, uh, this is when we don't consider five, so we would have six, and then one again. Okay, perfect. Okay, so finally, when you go over here, I'm pretty sure you can realize how we will find the answer. So once you end up going down over here, what would end up happening is we would have one and one over here. So what we would do is uh, we would consider this one to be part of the sub array. So when you end up considering this one to be part of our sub array, we would end up with, what is this over here? So uh, one minus one, obviously. So our target ends up becoming zero. And there's going to be nothing inside of our numbers. Now this over here tells us that we have found an answer. So when we have a value of zero, that means that we have found an answer, right? And uh, we really don't care how our sub array is split. But in this case, we have found an answer. And just for the sake of explanation, let me just show you how the sub array was split. And also, just to be clear, when we end up with the target of one, we're directly just going to end up returning true, simple. Okay, so in this case, where did we go left? So we went left when we chose the number five. Okay, just keep track of that. We went left when we chose the number one. Okay, and what I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna go uh, back all the way to the beginning and let's just see what happened there. So just remember, so far, we chose, we went left on the number five and the number one. So that means five and one. Let me, okay, so currently we have some sub array. Okay, this, this is one sub array. And in the sub array, currently we have five and one. Now over here, we went uh, left again. So we went left when we chose the number five again. Okay, but where did we end up going right? So we went right at this point over here. So we went right about choosing the number 11. So over here, that means when we went right, that would be part of an other sub array, right? So this is one sub array as one and sub array two only consists of 11. And if you want to check it, if you add these two up, five plus five plus one is 11. And when you add this up, you get 11. So S1 is equal to S2. And to be further sure, S1 plus S2 is equal to 22. So over here, we found our correct answer. And I did not obviously draw the entire tree. But I'm sure you can imagine how this works. I just focused on the part which gives us the correct answer. So yeah, now let's see how we can actually implement this in code. And hopefully you did understand the theory behind this. Okay, so over here, we're gonna start off by defining a helper function or let's just call it DFS, okay? Because that's what we're actually doing. So what exactly are the parameters we're gonna give this function? So to actually just get that, uh, let's just see what we actually gave it. So at each time we gave it the target, right? Which in this case, 11. And we also gave it the nums array, right? And both of them changed accordingly. And so that's exactly what we're going to give for our DFS. So at DFS over here, we're going to give it a target. And we're also going to give it our uh, nums uh, array. Perfect. Okay, so we have those two. And over here, what are the base conditions that we had? So if our target was less than zero, then in that case, we're directly just going to return false. And the reason for that is because that means one of the sub areas has become too big, right? We have crossed our, the target and the sum is just way too much, okay? Now, another condition is if our target over here is equal to zero, then in that case, we're just directly going to end up returning true. So those are kind of the two base cases that we have. But now we want to account for the recursive part of this question. So to do that, what we're going to do is, what I'm going to do is we're going to use the enumerate function. So let's do for index comma num in enumerate. So if you don't know what enumerate does is it gives you the current index 
and the value of it. So enumerate comma uh, num for enumerate and num. Okay. So for example, if you just look at this, uh, this over here would give us a tuple value of zero comma one. This would be one comma five. So index comma the current value. All right. So we have this, and what exactly are we going to do with this? So we're going to call this inside of our DFS function and we want to give it the target. So what is the target over here going to be? So the target is going to be the current target minus whatever number we are currently on. Okay. So that is the target. And over here, what exactly is going to be our number? So the number over here is going to be nums and what exactly we're we going to be choosing. So we're going to go to our index. And we're going to do plus one and choose everything other other than that. So we actually ended up doing the opposite here. We chose the ending, but it doesn't really matter, right? So all we're doing here, we have one, five, 11, five. We're choosing one as the current value. And we're choosing, so for our nums, we're only going to consider everything after one. So that equals to this part over here. Okay. So yeah, we have that. And that over there is going to be for our DFS function. But over here, what we're going to end up checking is we're going to check its value. So if uh, making this DFS call gives us a value of true, we're going to end up returning true. And yeah, so that should be it. And at the very ending, if we do not end up returning true, then in that case, we're directly just going to end up returning false. Okay, so that's going to be it for our DFS function. We are going to make an additional change to it. But before that, let's just understand uh, we need to make a call to our function. So first we want to find out what exactly our target is. So to do that, we want to first find the sum of nums. So the sum of nums is just going to be sum and then nums. Okay. So now we have the sum of nums and now we want to find out what the target is. So how do we do that? Well, we just saw it, right? So sum, and, uh, we're going to divide it by two, but first we want to check, is it even divisible by two? So to do that, we're going to do sum underscore nums mod two, and we're going to check if it's equal to zero. And if it's not equal to zero, then we can directly return false, okay? Because the both subsets or sub areas are not going to have the same answer. So we have that. And now finally, we, we have to make the DFS call. So DFS, our target is going to be sum of nums divided by two. And our uh, nums area that we're going to use is going to be what we start off with, right? So the nums over here. So nums. And we're going to return whatever value this ends up outputting for us, okay? So if you do this right now, uh, this over here is going to give us a correct answer. But uh, what ends up happening is we get a TLE, right? So time limit exceeded. So how exactly can we kind of account for our exceeded time limit? So to uh, account for that, we're going to be using a cache, okay? So basically all we're doing is we're just going to be storing the values as we come across it inside of some sort of data structure. And for this purpose, we're going to be using a set, okay? So let's just define a cache outside of this over here. And it, it's going to start off as an empty set. So over here, what we're going to be doing each time is we're going to add the current uh, target to our cache. Okay, so self.cache and to it, we're going to add whatever target we are on. So what is basically going to end up happening is every time we come across our target, what we're going to do is we're actually going to add it to our cache. And if the target is already inside of our cache, then in that case, we're going to end up returning false. And the basic reason that we're doing that, so if we actually ended up going inside of a certain target and we did not end up returning true yet, then that means that we did not even get a value of true. So that's exactly what we're kind of checking for. So we're going to check if our target is inside of our cache, sorry, self.cache. And if it is, then in that case, we're going to end up returning false for that instance. Okay, so I actually forgot to add one thing. So if you go back to our drawing over here as well, we had two options, right? So we would either include the current number as being part of the current sub array, or we would not include that number to be part of certain sub areas. So over here, all we did is we did include that number as the current sub area, but we also want to be looking at the other situation, right? And to do that, we're just going to do or, and in this case, all we need to do is we're not going to consider the number. So in that case, the target is going to stay the same. Okay, so this over here should be it. And now let's submit our solution. Oh, and also thanks a lot for a thousand subscribers. So yeah, thanks a lot for the support guys. And yeah, so as you can see, our submission did get accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching. Do let me know if you have any questions and thank you.